Aloha everyone. This is July 30th through August 10th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In this episode, the eruption goes into a pause. Let's get into it. We pick up on July 30th, back down at Poiki. The ocean entry has continued its gradual advance towards the boat ramp. The ocean entry itself is distributed along about a two kilometer wide area. It's really wide, this ocean entry, but that advance towards the boat ramp is gradually progressing. On the morning of July 31st, there is another summit collapse event at the Kilauea Caldera. This produces a subsequent surge at Fisher 8 about an hour, hour and a half later. And in this surge, the volatility increases with this influx of magma. The lava channel is able to fling some piece of molten debris or satellite in another way, a section of dry brush near the Puna Geothermal Venture that consumes the PG cam. This cam that has been with us throughout the entire eruption is lost to the brush fire that day. It freezes on the final frame showing the smoke from that fire. The period between the summit collapse events has been increasing more and more with each collapse. The duration between them, that window, is elongating. So the periods in between these collapses are somewhat uneventful in the Lower East Rift Zone at the eruption site. They, the eruption continues, but the volatility is mostly around the periods following one of these collapses. So for the rest of July 31st, August 1st, we are in that period between surges. The next surge comes on August 2nd. When the surge does come through the system on August 2nd, it overflows the lower section of the lava channel. Now this is very close to where the lava channel overflowed the week prior and started that large Kipuka brush fire that destroyed a half dozen homes and damaged many more. This, is, this phase in the eruption is getting concerning just because of all this volatility around the surges. We're really paying attention to the window that the surge is kind of expected to occur and that's the time to really be on guard. Following the surge on August 2nd, we find ourselves back in that holding pattern once again where we're waiting for the next summit collapse event to occur and that subsequent surge to come through the system because those are really the times you have to pay attention. So August 2nd, that evening goes by, August 3rd goes by and we're in that holding pattern where the eruption's in a rather steady state, it's continuing, and then we get to the expected arrival of that next summit collapse event on August 4th. We're about 48 hour intervals, maybe 50 hour intervals at this point in the eruption. And we start to approach that time period when we expect it to happen, but it's eerily quiet up at the summit. The earthquakes that precede the summit collapse event, these twos and threes that are rather shallow are not occurring. Not only that, the tilt meters up at the summit are also starting to level out. The window for the expected arrival of this next collapse event goes by. Fisher Aid immediately starts to see the impacts of that missed surge and we realize that there are some major changes taking place right now. And it's a good thing that that surge did not come because the lava channel was pretty compromised by this point in the eruption. That last surge on August 2nd created a backup, uh, that we called it the train wreck, where all this ah ah clogged the channel to the point where it was way above the rim of the channel. So another surge, a bunch of lava to come through that channel would find obstacles and it could have gotten really bad if there was just one more collapse and that eruption continued for another couple of days at the strength that it was occurring at. By August 5th, the eruption has changed entirely. Fisher 8 is no longer producing a large lava flow that feeds into the lava channel. It is now just a pool of bubbling lava confined entirely within its own crater. The lava channel is not being fed anymore, but that does not mean the advancement has stopped on Poiki. There is still a lot of molten lava in that lava channel making its way down slope, feeding this ocean entry. There's a lot of lava stockpiled in that lava delta and it's gonna continue to ooze out and it's gonna continue its advance on Poiki even though it's not being fed anymore. August 6th comes and goes without much change at Fisher 8 or the eruptive site. The 
lava within fissure 8 means that it's still technically an active eruption, but it's no longer feeding lava into that lava channel. By this point in the eruption on August 9th, many people thought Poiki was going to be spared. There was no longer lava feeding into the lava channel. It was unlikely that that leading edge of the area encroaching upon the Poiki boat ramp would be able to overcome the obstacles in its way to cover it. So out of the woods, not so quick, sand starts to inundate the area. It starts to first uh, accumulate around the breakwater and filling in between the, the jacks as it wraps around the break wall. By August 10th, Fisher 8 is just a little recessed pool of lava in there. And the lava channel itself has crusted over. That'll do it for July 30th through August 10th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode, the eruption went into a pause, and the next one, it ends. Until next time, aloha.